Steven, you all right, start? we're all good now. We're all good now. Das Vidanya. Everybody, let's hear us to a great show. The Charters, you know what's coming in the next few days? We're going to have a fucking great time. Ich bin hut. <laughs> it's a big time. <laughs> to everyone listening, cheers, buddy. So we're starting late. Bob and Greg. Yeah. Was it knob Greg? No, that was... Uh, oh, I would enjoy a nice knob Crick. You are you gay. Are <laughs> great in his mouth. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> we appreciate your genius, Dave. It's going to tickle my tonsils. Dutch Hall. 
to appreciate that my listeners are out there trying to live their lives. They're trying to get through every day. They're trying to put food on the table for their families, a roof over their heads. They sometimes don't have time to travel the world and see what it's all about out there. And that's our job here at Live from Dutch Hall. So I took it upon myself to go to La La Land. Take us on a bit of a ride, Peter. I want to go to the place where it all kind of happens. The old Hollywood, all the glitz and glamour. See what it's all about, you know? Like, go down there and see with my own two eyes. See what Jim Morrison saw on the beaches of Venice. It's a mojo ride. And I did it, Michael. I did it. I saw those things, and I want to tell these people what happened. Well, we should hear about it then. And Steve, the reluctant German... Went to a third world country and cut people's legs off. <laughs> I can't believe we won't mention it. It's going to come up. <laughs> but there's only one way to get to it. So. What's that? It's a little thing we do here at Live in the Dutch Hall that people have grown to love. And it's called our... A theme song. Do your job, buddy. Uh, now, introduce 
presenting your host from live from the Dutch Hall. It's two time. President's Club Award winner, Pete Van Dyke, folks. All right. All right. Oh, I love it. You were, you were a fucking dick this morning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We really pulled this thing off with, like, uh, we're. You know, I actually thought we had Nathan Parrott, NHL uh, 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 hockey player, t- former Toronto Maple Leaf, you know, yeah. as a little gift from my cousin Michael because he loves <laughs> hockey so much. I'm like, we're going to get him Nathan Parrott tonight. I get one day, we're going to get Nathan Parrott. It's next week. I totally forgot. I, I botched it in my calendar. Yeah. It's still <laughs> awesome. Yeah, tonight, no guests. And I saw it on the calendar. I just had spent uh, four days in Los Angeles with my wife, and I thought... Uh, oh, L.A.? Yeah, no peep, no guests tonight, no guests for the show. And I thought, you know what? Perfect. Tell some some stories, have some cocktails. Some stories from uh, look at this. We got a nice cup full of uh, actually, because our listeners will send us hard liquor, and we drink Bud Light here. Yep. <laughs> to be honest with you, and they don't sponsor our show, and we're gonna stop drinking Bud Light and hopefully get a beer sponsor for our show if I can get off my ass and uh, pretend I'm a professional. Well, it's in the cards. You want to turn me up? Okay. Is that me? Three? All right, I got Two, it. One. Go. <laughs> no, no. Anyways, uh, so pe- uh, what are they saying? We're getting a beer sponsor. We're getting a beer sponsor. Yes. I'm working on it, but it's my fault that I haven't capitalized on the beer sponsor. So we've been drinking Bud Light because it's nice for my tummy. <laughs> it's a yeah. safe haven. <laughs> yeah. But our listeners send us hard liquor. So we're like, well, we got to drink hard liquor once in a while. So we got some mix. And I'm a beautiful wife. Went got me some mix. And uh, we got some ice, oh, thank you, and we Jay. got some glasses from uh, Clean Flow, yep. Van Dyke Party Services glasses. Thanks, Clean Flow. And best the sponsor ever. The best sponsor ever, bar none. And we're, what we're doing is we're putting on an old school fucking Dutch Hall original cast, yep. the, just the Nocturnal Emissions. Pete Van Dyke is co-host, director, bus driver, bartender, Paul Van Dyke behind the bar, doing what he does. You know, <laughs> we got my wife taking the odd picture here. Jane Van Dyke doing a fantastic job. Oh, yeah. We got Whiskey Wes on base where he should be. We don't have charters doing that one <laughs> finger thing that <laughs> Tyler Shazma zoomed in on and my dad is somehow obsessed with. <laughs> He's somehow obsessed about it, charters. He's just like, charters is only doing one finger thing like this. That's a talent? What is that? That's not a talent. That's so funny. Teresa made the same comment about me playing bass. <laughs> Teresa, Why do you only play one string with one finger. Is that how? Ba- <laughs> is that how bass works? Wes, is that how bass works? That's not how bass works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. No charge there. Figuring it out. <laughs> there are times like because we had Dylan Cunningham here taking see the reluctant Germans place, mm-hmm. and Dylan Cunningham is mm-hmm. everyone has to admit he's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, he's all right. I'd say yeah. he's an accomplished musician. <laughs> that guy can really wail. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, you get a guy like that in there, and you're like, what the hell uh, happened? We're a pool shed in Pine Grove, Ontario, and Dylan Cunningham comes in here an, a number of times, says, I'd love to join the Nocturnal Emissions uh-huh. to take the place of Steve the, Re- the Reluctant German. It's a great honor for Dylan <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Do you understand what that is, Steve? It's awesome. He comes in here and, and he's saying, if you ever want me to do that again, I would I would love to do it. I would love to replace Steve the Reluctant German because <laughs> I think that uh, I could uh, totally replace him and there would be no need for Steve the Reluctant German here on uh, in. And I said, hey, hey, That's almost easy, quote. buddy. Wow. <laughs> Is that what he said, Kev? I can't remember exactly. <laughs> You're paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, I think. It was hazy. <laughs> <laughs> we do things on this show that somehow make the end of the night... Uh, After hours. Uh, gray. I'd say gray at best. Foggy. You know. Foggy. <laughs> yeah. So is this my last show then? <laughs> no, no. You get to keep coming in, Steve. It's the grandfather rule, as right. it turns out. Talent does not uh, matter. Oh, it's who was yeah, here he first. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for that. As it turns out, for this particular program, we're not going for the best in the world. But my next program, Steve, you might be out of. <laughs> is what I gotta say. <laughs> it's, I'm just cutting. I'm, I want to break it to you live on air so that it's not awkward when we do it in private. Sure. Yeah. Because I was like, remember I said this on the show. It was kind of like a joke, and you laughed. <laughs> but really, no. Don't come in. All right. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I would never do that to you, Steve. I would never. Do. That's the only reason I could joke about it. If so it was sad. real, I couldn't joke about it. I would be so sad to not be able to come here on Thursdays. Yeah, that's right. It would be awful. But this, 
But I'm telling you, oh, Kevin. Kevin's always working, eh? Right. You know right. what I'm telling you? Uh, we have to. Uh, so, Stephen, while we're talking to you, uh, I got to tell you, the uh, listening public is not a fan of your stories. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this is the truth. And I'm just Steven breaking it, again, breaking up. it to you on air because I can't do it in private because I'm a pussy, right? But, uh, uh, but you do interesting things. Like, for real, you've been to some really cool places. You've done some really interesting things, right? Yes. And there must be, there must be something you can teach our listening public, right, that comes out of Steve the Reluctant German's experiences in, in, the, in these parts of the world that other people could only dream of going to, right? Sure. And uh, so you, you have gone to, like, you do some sort of German experiments, right, with the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, with the Is chopping it, legs off people and, and yes, I don't understand the details, Steve. <laughs> sure, but it's something like that, right? Okay, it's a Meg, a Doctor Megdala type of thing. Is it Mangdala? Mangdala. Mangdala. Checkity check. All right, we got my. Uh, this Your is my real back. mic back. Uh, for those cracks, you know what? You people that didn't like the cracks, this silky voice you're gonna hear for the rest of the show. <laughs> It's going to, like, blow your oh, fucking so it. mind. It's going to be worth it. All those uh, nasty sounds and awkward moments you heard at the beginning of the show are gone now. The velvet voice and of And now Pine the Grove. velvet voice of Pine Grove has emerged, and we are going to have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Steve. I'm right. busy insulting and asking you to tell a story at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's quite the combo. <laughs> Um, so uh, you did go to a very remarkable place. Like you, you, you in your wildest dreams, mm -hmm. you would never think Steve the Reluctant German is going to end up in Ecuador and Guatemala That's right. and all this stuff because you were a, 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 essentially what are you doing there? For uh, real, I, I make okay. jokes, but what are you really doing? For real, I am a, a video producer and um, and I was sent with a medical mission down to Guatemala in the fall and to Ecuador uh, last week. And a uh, team of doctors, surgeons, nurses, the whole gamut, fixing people up, installing new hips and new knees. Awesome. And your job is what? I videographer. <laughs> I am the videographer, and I take pictures of them doing their thing. Your I job is to document this process. Yes. Like all the blood and everything, all the all incisions the blood. I mean, and the... I mean, scrubs in the ORs, taking pictures. And no kidding. This is a very interesting story, right? Like, the average person in the world doesn't get to go to Ecuador, wear scrubs, go into an operating room where he has no business being. He doesn't Zero. understand anything. <laughs> Zero. Steve's a fucking German, has no business around medicine. He just likes to medicate himself in private. That's right. In his old back shed, because he lives in Norfolk County and he's adjusted. <laughs> That's, That's what right. we do. We build a shed in the backyard. We do certain things in there we won't talk about. We don't have to follow the rules there. It's our fucking shed. L stay out of it, government. You know That's what right. I'm talking about? That's right. This is Norfolk County. You can pull that shit in the city, but not down here. Not in our sheds. <laughs> we got freedom down here, you know? Sheds and garages. But Steve's the same way, but he goes all the way to Ecuador. He does these things that other people can only think is like a dream, right? Mm -hmm. And all because what, Steve? Like, how do you get the opportunity? Like, how did, how did you get that opportunity? Uh, it came through work. And so I work for a small production company, and uh, we've been doing these videos for years, and now it's my turn to go. So Yeah, I, but that's what I think people don't re respect about Steve, eh? Like, the guy dedicated his life, right? Am I wrong about this? Mm -hmm. To the pursuit of documenting these things. Okay, yeah. You even went to, you went to a higher level, uh, level of education yep. in order to learn more about your craft, correct? It's true. Yeah, and now you now because of that, you travel the world documenting it, right? Yeah. Right? Which sounds to people, like to people who are going to their cubicles every day, I got to understand, this is a remarkable story. Yes. Don't you agree? I do agree. And, and they're sitting there saying, like, how in the heck does this guy accomplish this much? And yet, you're sitting there feeling about yourself, like us, uh, like uh, uh, you're struggling to get you know, to go through life like sure. everyone else, right? But they would think you have the life of Riley. You're traveling the world. You're filming, like, uh, little uh, Ecuadorian kids getting their legs cut off. It's awesome, That's right? right. <laughs> they, would, they would be wrong, though. They're what? Wrong. The people are wrong to, to think that, though. Why? Well, I mean, I could be... Uh, it's not the most lucrative job in the entire there universe. There you go, right? It's how you judge your life, right? Isn't it? Right. The experiences to people who have, like, concentrated their life on getting the money... Uh, they would lose the experience portion of it. 
and the person that pursues the experience portion of his life loses the money portion of it. Isn't okay. isn't right? Where you would think, as a person that's been pursuing the things that they don't enjoy, that they would uh, uh, have they would that the other people that were doing the things that seemed awesome would get paid great money too, but they don't. They do it for like nothing, right? That's Most right. of the time, like and I'm not saying you did it for nothing, but like. But like most of the time, if you're doing something that's a passion project that you actually enjoy, that's like making you feel like you're like a uh, an actualized person that's like doing their like doing their mission in life because it feels great every time you do it. Yeah, that is not work, and therefore you don't feel like you need to be compensated for it. Yeah, and then therefore you'll do it for nothing, and then people take advantage of that, right? Yeah. Hey, Cav, you too in the music business, right? You see that? I must see that all the time. You see people yeah. that are like. Uh, they love it so much. It's so much of who they are. And then they're just like, um, like they'll do it for nothing. And then you're like, how can I make a living when someone else will just do it for free? Yeah, I think it's a big problem, actually, with a lot of engineers, musicians, everybody in the industry, because yeah. they want to work in the industry. Yeah. And sometimes there can be so little security. And, you know, when's the next gig? When's the next show? You know, there can be a lot of insecurities about when the next job is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And so that ties into it a lot too. And people have a fear of, you know, commitment in that situation um, because they don't want to lose out on the next thing. You don't, right, they right. don't want to be replaced. You know, there's competition there. So there's that that <laughs> plays into it. But yeah, that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and uh, do you find this to be true, Steve, too? Because you're in the creative arts, right? Like, so yeah. do you find that to be true? You see people that do what you do, that go to study at a higher level of education. They, they uh, commit their lives to this craft. They want to make a living at it. And yet they're, they're competing with people who just figured it out on their own and want to do it for free, right? That's right. And, and, uh, and it makes it difficult to get ahead, right? Well, it, it taints the whole thing, right? Like yeah. if, uh, if you're doing social media, everyone knows that a, a nine-year-old can make a Facebook post. So how do you make money? Making social media, social yeah. media. If a nine-year-old can do it on your phone, like why hire an expert? Yeah, but I mean, there's reasons to hire an expert. Yeah, because they actually understand it and they can use it as a tool. They can they can understand the results of the data. They can like uh, use that data to manipulate for future things. And then everyone gets like uh, creeped out by that because who are in the arts world because that's uh, uh, sounds like a little fishy. Right. Well, because they want to do something pure, you know, like they don't want to. So then th that seems like against their values. You know what I mean? You've got people who've like worked for years obsessing over their craft and their their talents. And then you've got technology that is just coming so fast along with it that you got people that don't really need much talent. And they're able to enter into all these different fields without much any background. And they're able to produce because of technology's growth, a pretty decent product. Yeah. Cheaper than what the person who has worked, you know, thousands and thousands of hours, you know, perfecting what they do. Yeah. And so that does play a big part into it. Yeah, it's like this. The, the technology's created this, like, uh, they've removed any barrier to entry to the industry, and everyone's in now. Exactly. So now you have such garbage, like garbage, and you have, like, like genius that's getting missed. You know, you have both sides of it, right? Yep. And, and and it's because the barrier to entry is gone, right? You know what I mean? I tell you, I used to be a banker like fucking five years ago, right? This this whole concept to me would be foreign. Like it wouldn't have entered my mind once, any of this, that people like this existed, that people could actually like make a living at their creative pursuits or anything like that. Like that, that people like have studied and have tried to become professionals at this and all like the whole the whole concept to me is like loss like i would never think of it i was in the farming business you know like i was in the finance business i didn't i never thought of it of it at all you know and now i see it and it's like really interesting and this ties into my trip to to la which i keep wanting to say vegas for some reason yeah, but because in my head la and vegas are like these two douchey hey, not man. real like fucking places that I think are horrible. I think Las Vegas is the worst place in the world. I'm sorry to anyone that lives there or likes Las Vegas, but it is the worst. It's where people go to be the biggest dicks <laughs> they can possibly be. So you go there, you see the worst of everybody, and it is the and, it, and I just think it's gross because I've been there so many times, right? right. And uh, I have never been to L.A., but I always had in my in my mind like, charge what you say when you think L.A. What do you think? Have you been there before? No, never to LA, no. 
perfect. So, like, uh, what would you think when you would uh, think about L.A.? What would your perception be of the city? I would think, like, um, movie stars and rich people and then uh, bodybuilders. Oh, yeah, like the old <laughs> Hulk Hogan on the beach? Yeah, yeah, on the beach. Yeah. I went there. I went there to uh, Muscle Beach in Venice because we stayed in Venice. Actually, that's where our Airbnb was in Venice, and uh, so we went and uh, rode our bikes. They uh, our Airbnb came with two free bikes, so my wife and I would get up in the morning. We'd go ride our bikes down to Venice Beach. It was probably like uh, it should have been. How long should the? (laughs) It should have been probably a (laughs) twenty minute bike ride. It took us like forty five minutes every time because we would like bike around the whole fucking world before we get to where we're supposed to go. And you try on your bicycle to use your phone to use GPS maps to get you to where you're going, but it doesn't keep up to your bicycle enough because you're on walk mode. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it can't keep up to your bicycle. You're pedaling too fast. I'm pedaling too fast. I'm so I'm, I'm in a hurry. I want to get to the beach. I want to see what's going on in Venice Beach, Dave. You know what's going on in Venice Venice Beach? A lot of mental illness. <laughs> I'll tell you that. A lot of mental illness. Yeah. You know where everyone goes that has this dream? You know you know the beginning of American Idol? At the beginning of oh, American yeah, Idol yeah. where people come on and they sing and they have no talent at all, but they really believe that Simon's just being a fucking dick? <laughs> My parents say I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> you know those delusional assholes? I don't understand those people. <laughs> I, I don't get if that's a front. You know, because some of them, it's just like, how how do you not know that? Exactly. How, is, how has somebody not told you yeah. that you cannot sing? Right. Or how has somebody supported you enough for yeah. you to think that? To like, put you on TV so to sing. It's just so fucking mean. And do you yeah. know where those, those pe- people? <laughs> do you know where those people go when they've when no one has them when they when they've been told that a bunch of times and they still don't believe it? They go to Venice Beach, <laughs> and uh, that is Venice Beach. I swear they to God. there. My wife and I rode our bikes down there two days in a row. We went from one end to the other. I don't even know if this mic is. It's like really sound and weird, but it's uh. It's good. It's good. It's good, good in my yeah. ears. Yeah, right. good. Something changed in my headphones, but uh, um. Anyways, uh. I always think of that scene at the in uh, Tenacious D: Pick a Destiny where Jack Black finally gets to Hollywood. Yeah. And he uh, meets Kyle Gass on the beach there for the first time. Yeah. And there's like the gold man there. <laughs> yeah. His thing and all that. I'll tell you, you go to Venice Beach, and we heard people singing. We've had people trying to sell us a, a, a CD. To be honest with you, I never met a black guy in uh, California, in Los Angeles area, in the greater Los Angeles area. I never met one black guy that didn't try to get me to buy a CD and then uh, also uh, try to get him to sign it and then uh, give me to get him money to give him the CD, right? I don't know if that's uh, true of everyone. I'm sure sure it's not. Well, but my experience in that city <laughs> was that uh, you're going to get a lot of uh, CDs try to be sold. It's probably to you. the season for that, you know? A CD season? Yeah, CD season. I went down spring, during springtime. Did you ever have spring. another person completely different and looked like he was with a completely other group sell you another CD, totally different artwork, but it's the same CD <laughs> from the same artist? <laughs> I uh, no because I I th- I see it as a scam coming up in a long ways away. But you know I went to Nashville. Nashville's the same thing. They try to give you their mixtapes or their their CDs all the time, and I actually enjoy it if their conversation's good enough, and uh, they're entertaining me through the process of trying to sell me their CD. I will buy it uh, and give them the money because it's funny. The one guy s- told uh, had a booth on Venice Beach and it said uh, shitty advice one dollar. <laughs> like, how do you not get shitty advice for a dollar? dollar. Yeah, of yeah. course. And, uh, like, I mean, he gives you shitty advice, and uh, you do what you want with it. <laughs> it's good yeah. fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you not give that guy money? You know what his real job is? <laughs> Selling cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Selling cocaine is his real job. <laughs> but the the rest of the people on the beach, like, they would even let people up on a microphone or some people with a guitar. Like, no one had talent. Like, the entire strip. It's fucking huge, man. You really? drive your bike from one end to the other. You hear everyone performing. It's like, shit, 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 shit. It's wow. garbage. <laughs> it's the worst of the worst performers you ever want to see in your life. You don't want to give anyone <laughs> wow. of them money. You keep thinking, like, look at the guy's setup. He's awesome, right? Like, he must be in here forever because he makes a living being awesome, playing a beach performer or whatever. Venice Beach, L.A., like, this is where you get the best of the best. Even a failure's got to be good, right? No. Nope. They're terrible. (laughs) They are terrible. The whole fucking strip was terrible. You're not going to get hired by uh, Tourism L.A., I don't think. That's for sure. 
No, but it's awesome entertainment for a comic. Oh, it's just going good. up and down the strip and seeing shit after shit. It's like, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. That guy was oh, crazy. Shit. Like, nut job. I got story after story after story of every crazy person I saw. I was fascinated by them. I <laughs> love them. I love crazy people. They're great. Is there a lot of rollerbladers? Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jane saw this one guy. He had, like, fucking training wheels on his rollerblades. Remember that? <laughs> what? Jane's like, look at the guy's skates. He's got, like, his big skates. And he had a rollerblades. He was a Jamaican guy with dreadlocks and a turban. And then he was like selling his. He sold his. Uh, Try to sell a CD Sounds as well. Sounds like he's mixed up. Is there anybody with like the old school four wheel roll like the like side oh, by side? Oh, we saw. We be. saw a beauty. She was there every day. We were there, going up and down the strip on full old school rollerblades, yeah. ghetto blaster, roller girl, tape, tape, play. And uh, boom fucking boombox, doing the moves, white everything. Black. White or black? White, <laughs> red-haired, very overweight, considering how active she was. <laughs> I think it's more of a dietary thing because uh, she was really active. She was doing, she was doing the exercise. But you can't run away from food, people. You can't do it. It'll get you. I don't care, Boombox Girl. You're never going to run away from food. California Games. Yeah, you're going to have to stop with those crazy uh, fucking. Uh, 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 Mexican fries, whatever you're eating. <laughs> but it, uh, well, nacho dip. It's the yeah. queso. It's yeah. the queso. You got to stay away from the queso. <laughs> you know what I love about uh, California, though, is uh, I got to use, like, a, like, I live in the sticks. People out there have to understand, if you're in a big city, you can use Uber, you can use Lyft, you can use all these things, right? So I, I don't get to use it. I live in the sticks. You know what we have to do in the sticks if we want, want to get away from drinking and driving? We got a bill shed in our backyard and drink there. And then we have to sleep in there. Yeah. Or you sleep in a ditch. <laughs> and we have to, I think I'm gone again. Is it just my headphones? I think maybe? it's your headphones. Got okay, cool. Yeah. Um so anyways, we got uh something's fucked with these headphones, man. It's driving me crazy. Someone else can talk. Did you guys drink your shots already? All right, there you are. No, you're good. You're good. I'm back. Sorry. Am I the only one with a shot left? Yes, yeah. David. Yeah, I drank mine at the beginning, hey, Dave. Party, Cheers. Dave. Cheers, Cheers, Dave. David. Cheers. 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 So uh, what was what was I saying? We were really in. Uh, You're talking about how you got around Lyft, Uber. Oh, Lyft, yeah. So Lyft, we got a bill of shed in our backyard to drink. In uh, in a city like L.A., mm -hmm. you go. I was living in Venice. I would go on my phone. I would, couldn't get Uber because they told me my Canadian uh, credit card was no good. So I go to Lyft, and I just sit there and I put in my uh, details in my phone, and all of a sudden uh, I put them where I want to go, and I put my picture in there. And all, and all of a sudden, I uh, hit uh, request left, and the person, you can see him on a little screen yeah. on your thing, where his car is. Here comes Tony. What do you mean you put your picture in? You had to take a selfie? Yeah, I took a selfie. Oh. And I'm smiling, and when I get in there, it's on his dashboard, my so picture. So Tony knows who to look for. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah, I didn't have a Tony, but I had an Alejandro. Oh, Alejandro. <laughs> oh, hi. I had a Jesse. Oh, Jesse. Yeah. Did you have Jesse's it was girl? A Jesse. I am Jesse. <laughs> he Jesse. <laughs> What? That's the best way to travel for sure. I yes. don't, I've never lifted, but I've Ubered, and it's the best. Absolutely. It's the best. Fuck cabs, oh, man. Yeah. We took a cab from the airport, and then after that was all Lyft, and it was like, I would never buy a car if I lived anywhere again. Yeah. I would just do this for the rest of my life, and it would be totally cool. I don't have to pay gas. I don't have to pay parking. I don't have to fucking worry about you anything. You don't even have to pay them. It just happens through your phone somehow. Yeah, it's all just numbers just happening. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm like, I'm filthy rich. Fuck this. You know what's funny <laughs> is they're probably thinking no, the same kidding. thing. I'm though. just kidding. Actually. Like the drivers are probably like, I'm getting paid in my account. I'm, I'm fucking super happy too. This guy needs a ride. I'm around doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'll drive this guy around. These guys are Lovely saying, wife. they go, if you want to work 12 hours a day, you can work 12 hours a day. If you want to work like an hour a day, you work an hour a day. Right. You don't want to work at all. You don't work at all. It's just like they ask you if you want to pick up the lift and you say yes or no. If you get it, you get it. Like you, you don't have to take take it. So it's like personal freedom. People right. are pursuing other interests and driving Lyft on the side or driving Uber on the side. Did you have any times where the rates were way higher than you expected? Like oh, during Uber was time? Uber was way higher than Lyft, by the way. Oh really? Mm. Way higher. Because mm. when I'm, I my Uber quotes were ten bucks more than uh, than uh, Lyft was to get from my place in Venice to L. A. to the comedy store. It was ten bucks more to go with Uber than it was with Lyft. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. So just so you know, everybody, go. Uh, like I think Lyft is better than Uber. Fuck Uber. Well, Uber's got a lot of stuff they're paying for, right? And, and also, Uber, Uber, uh, uh, Uber judges you. 
That's they, bullshit. They rate you as a passenger. What? And if you're too low of a rating as a passenger, then other people won't pick you up because you're seen as a pain in the ass. They're like big brother? Mm. So you would be fucked, Dave, because you're like an <laughs> asshole. Like people I bet you I have a five-star Uber rating. You do? Five-star, I bet. You think you're a good passenger? How do I check it? I don't, I don't, <laughs> do we don't check it right now. I want to know by just talking to you. What do I think I'm a good passenger? Yes. Of course. What do you do when you get in a cab? I've never ridden with me, though, as a bystander. <coughs> I've always been myself. Oh, you haven't drove yourself but around I, in an Uber? Yeah, I know, but I like, what, like what's, your, like, what's your general thing? You get in the back or shotgun. you get in the front? Every time, shotgun. Shotgun. So you're in front. Right. You're making the guy real uncomfortable. Right away. Now, is there two people in the back? Is the back full so you have to go in the front? Or is, a, is there room in the back and you decide to go to the front? It doesn't matter how many people are with me. I'm always in the shotgun. So you are you don't give a shit about how much room there is in the back, you're going in the front, right? That's right. Okay. I want to chat with the driver. Okay. See what he's all or she is all about. And so now you're now you're in there, you're chatty, right? Now let's yeah, say chatty, I'm checking it out. Like, why is there a Rubik's cube in your uh, cup holder? And you know, you're you're doing like your that. assessment of the person, right? That's right. And then you're this is all part of your 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 uh, rating system of what you're going to do to the Uber, Uber <laughs> guy, right? For real, like or girl or girl. Like, you, you would uh, take that rating s- system pretty serious, right? Oh, yeah. So d- what do you give normally? I want to keep a five-star rating myself. Are you talking about me or the driver? No, both. I, I know you want to be a good, you want to be perceived as If the as driver a g- keeps me occupied while, I'm, while we're driving there, and I don't even know we're driving, we're just having a nice chat, and I'm entertained, five stars every time. Okay, but I got to tell you, my wife and I were at a comedy club. We climbed a mountain, right? And then we went to a comedy club. And then uh, it, we spent hours there drinking, and then uh, we we uh, were very tired, and we wanted to go home and go to bed, and we didn't want to talk to Alejandro. Oh, you want to be in the back? We just wanted to have him shut up and drive us to our thing, and luckily we got—I don't remember what his name was—but we got some old Mexican guy, who was like, I don't even fucking understand English that well, and I don't want to talk to these guys. I just want to drive. And he said nothing. And I'm like, five fucking stars. Shut up, buddy. Oh. You are awesome. You know, where you have other guys saying, do you want water? Are you comfortable? Do you like the temperature in the car? I need five stars or they'll take away my license. Or, Sorry you know. about the sticky sheets. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just Hot like. Hot and the sticky yeah. sheets. I am going to get a, a bit of a release in the back of your car. <laughs> And then wipe it up with your floor mat. Are you cool with that? <laughs> five stars. Five stars. I think it sounds like a three. <laughs> I like to wipe my dick on your combat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look out for the headrest. <laughs> you see what I mean? Anyways, what we did was, did we cover Steve already? Yep. And then, uh, sure. so I go to L.A., and I realize that uh, there's delusional people in in uh, more because of my experience in Venice Beach, I realize there's more delusional people than I would ever have imagined, right? And then I go to the comedy store at night, right? The first night we go there, we go to the belly room. There's three rooms of the comedy store, the world famous comedy store. If you're not a comedy fan, the it's probably one of the most famous uh, comedy clubs in the entire uh, U.S. and maybe in the entire world. It used to be run by Mitzi Shore. And uh, it's like it had like Sam Kinison go through that and, uh, you know, like uh, Mark Marin. It's like a, this L.A. institution. It's like uh, it's got everybody that's ever been through L.A. has got to, how to stop at the comedy store. You know, it used to be if you want to get booked, booked on Johnny Carson, you had to go through the comedy store. So anyone that got booked on Johnny Carson had to be vetted at the comedy store. Right. So I'm thinking this is the Mecca mm-hmm. of comedy. We're going to go to the Mecca of comedy in L.A., and we're going to see these people that are in a league above anyone that I'm working with that are just going to be like, you know, like we're, this is what I have to try to attain in my comedy career is to get to this point of what these people are at. Yeah, right? uh, to open some doors. Right. Yeah, who knows what happens. And uh, you go into this uh, place. We went to the belly room for an open mic night. And there were some great comics. To be quite honest, there were some really, really good comics. And there were some people who were mentally ill. <laughs> And had no business being on stage whatsoever that were a disgrace to my craft mm. that made me sick that they were allowed in this place that I considered to be holy ground. Mecca. Yeah. And they were just going up there and disrespecting it with their shitty talent, right? And I was angry, very angry. Like I was actually disturbed by it, you know, because I was like, I work so hard at this. These people are in what I think is like uh, an accomplishment to play on the stage, and they're just like uh, doing this shit that's not even uh, uh, respectful, you know? 
And I saw one girl that was from New York, and she was down there, and uh, she did her act. And I was like, that makes me proud to be a comic because what she's doing, you can tell she's doing the same thing as me. She's working as hard as me, and she's, uh, um, like, slugging it away. And she's doing her fucking three minutes at this shitty open mic in L.A. with a crap crowd. You know, like, it's awful. It's the same as any fucking crowd in Kitchener or Brantford or Hamilton. or It's the same as anything in any city in the fucking world, right? I went to uh, 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 Vegas, too, did a set there. Same fucking thing. When you get into that point where you're trying to get on a stage, it's garbage. And every lunatic is trying to get on a stage, too. So you're, you have to, as a certain person of credibility, try to, like, distinguish yourself from people who are actually fucking nuts <laughs> like nut jobs right what was their thing pussy jokes no no it was like this older lady that went up there and just talked about i was one time in a car accident and it made it made me feel differently and then my neighbors are very uh upsetting and brr, 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 you know it's like fuck and there's no jokes it's just like a therapy session for some nut job woman you know what i mean there's no jokes you know what I mean? It's like legit insane people on stage, and somehow they got up there. Was that the girl from New York? No, no, she was good. I told you she was good. <laughs> yeah, what was her thing, though? What was she, she was a huge bitch. Oh. She's a huge bitch. <laughs> That's what her thing, that actually was her act. She was th- she's a really big woman, like she's tall, so she was just like like manhandle like lung, young twinks. And <laughs> fuck them, you know? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> that was her kind of her act. I liked it. I thought it was great. Anyway, she's nice. I talked to her after. Yeah. <laughs> and the comics were great. Like, I mean, I loved all the comics I met there and talked to and every inter- interaction I had with them, they were, they were fucking great. Like the good ones. Like the, not the, I didn't talk yeah. to the crappy ones. Did you see any famous people? Well, the one night, the last night we were there, we had like an all-star cast. If you're a comedy geek like I am, like it was a pretty all-star cast. And they put me as a comic in the front row and they, they upgraded my wife for free, they said, to oh, VIP. Very nice. Because she's so uh, loving and uh, and beautiful, and they put her in the front, and then uh, but I'm like, this is the worst place for a yeah. comic to be because I'm oh, not gonna fuck. laugh like a normal person. I'm gonna be like, saying, oh, that's a great joke, and I wish I thought of it first, and it's gonna be more critical than a than a like a fan of comedy, right? So I was like feeling bad, and the first comic picked up on it right away and just fucking hammered me for it, and I'm like, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, I don't know what to tell him. I just try my best to be like a uh, average comedy fan, you know, the one that wasn't uh, uh, studying. The f- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, pretend I don't know what, what he's doing right now. Pretend I don't know the tricks, because he's like, uh, li- I saw this one particular guy's act like two nights ago in the, in the belly room. So uh, he headlined. So I, I saw his act already. I knew his jokes, and I talked to him after that too. So, he, um, because he was good. You know, but I, when you hear the jokes a second time, it's not doesn't get the same reaction. I'm just saying, you know, that's for real. But it was like Whitney Cummings and Chris D'Elia and uh, Sebastian Man uh, Cal. That's some big names, though. And uh, yeah, like uh, Steve Renazizi was fucking awesome from the league, and he and he he was really good. And then who else? Uh, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and Jeff Ross and uh, um, uh, shoot, uh, Theo Vaughn and uh, who else am I missing? Those are the and that was just like a random, just a night? That was a Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Crazy. Yeah, Tuesday night, they were all doing 15 minutes and uh, working stuff out, and it was great, you know? And, uh, and, but, uh, and, and then after the show, they, they put up like, like any, they don't tell you the show's over. They just keep putting up more people, and they let up the n- lunatics again. <laughs> and then uh, you're sitting there thinking you're still watching the show with these awesome talents. Ali Wong, I forgot Ali Wong. She was great, too. Yeah, Ali Wong was great. And Nikki Glaser. And, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it was a freaking all-star cast. Like, these are all people that have Netflix specials right. that have, like, you know, our, like, they're, ha- they're all, like, super headliners across the country. And uh, you get to watch them all in one night, like, introduce each other and play off each other. It was awesome, you know, to really watch it at that level. Yeah. But at the same time, in order to see that great a talent, you had to pay the price of seeing the worst, like some of the worst talent <laughs> that yeah. you've ever seen, you know? <laughs> like, that's what the scene's like. It's just, it's like Toronto compared to, like, Hamilton for comedy. Toronto just has more comics. So they have more good comics. Right. They have more shitty comics. They have, so you, you, you actually have to sift through a lot more garbage 
to get something good in Toronto. Did it have the same kind of shitty rules as Toronto though? Like uh, worse. Three oh, minute, really? three minutes, oh. and uh, like you get, like you're you're put in a bad spot every time with people that aren't vetted. Like I think at the comedy store in L.A., they're trying to like say that people are. Um, they want to be a, like a supporter of the comics. So they want people to get a, a chance to start out. But in order to do that, you remove the barrier of entry and you let every garbage lunatic in. And then they have this, it kind of devalues their product. I think they should make those people vet themselves somewhere else and just have a showcase night to let them in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because otherwise it's, sh- it's garbage, right? What about the liberal sort of ness of Toronto? Like not being able to tell jokes that the Toronto fans aren't versus LA around. you mean yeah um, was, it that, was it the same that way like liberal like uh, don't tell any no like they were jokes they, that will offend people the females were doing a lot of me too stuff uh, because that's a big deal down there uh, and uh, but uh, other than that like there's a lot of like the same raunchy shit people trying to pull like old stuff for shock value and like words that have been dead for a while we should have made up a game for the piss break when Mike has to take a piss and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that when Mike leaves, we get to talk about him. Okay. Uh, that's a good uh, game, right? Okay. Sure. So when Mike leaves, take a piss, uh, we get to talk about him. Because I probably have to take a piss at some point in this show. <laughs> and then we'll talk about you. <laughs> we'll talk about me. Before, yeah. Mike, are you cool if I go into a segment we call Feedback? We got feedback? <laughs> we got feedback. Feedback. Well, we already had to thank Clean Flow for these beautiful oh, cups. Clean Flow, you know you're our number one f- sponsor for giving Van Dyke Party Services their start in life, where we will uh, actually end up making everyone's life better. If they just give us an email at live from the Dutch Shell at gmail.com and they say, you know what? I can't throw a proper party. I don't have any fun friends. I don't have any fun in my life. My life is boring as shit. What I'm going to do is give you an email. Enlist between five and twenty-nine Van Dyke first cousins. They're going to come in bright yellow jackets. You're going to have the time of your life. You're not going to regret it. And all it's going to cost you is one hundred dollars of cold hard cash plus all of, our, all of our expenses, which will be very dear. Super expensive. Super expensive for you. You won't even mm-hmm. understand how expensive You'll have those. To take are. out a loan, probably. <laughs> it is terrible. It will ruin. That will actually ruin you financially. But you're going to have the time of your it's life. It's worth it. And all, and if you're not 100 percent satisfied, that hundred dollars is coming right back to you. Put it right back in your pocket, buddy. No big deal. Ching. But those expenses have run through our bodies and potentially yours. Van Dyke Party Services. Don't live your life in regret. Brought to you by our good friends at Clean Flow. Yes. Thanks, Clean Flow. What up? Norpack. The beef people. Norpack. Come on, get the in that mic, Paul. The beef people. There, there you go. Is. Oh, buddy. That's oh. better. That's what we needed. That's better. Or pack. The beef people. There we go. <laughs> and just let that ruminate in your minds, mm. people. Or pack. The Salivating. beef people. There you go. Don't you eat. You need some beef? It's marbly. Mm. Just go to Norpack. The beef people. Ooh, Jay can do it, too. Can you get any lower? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who else we got? Army Electric? You know, you fuckers. Give my cousin a break, you know. It's getting to be like a little warm weather. Maybe he wants to go outside, cut his grass. Maybe he wants to look for some mushrooms out in the uh, wilderness. Spend some time with. I don't his know what he's into. Spend some time with his twelve kids. Yeah, maybe his fourteen kids would appreciate knowing what his face looks like. Yeah. Maybe toss the ball around in the yard. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't know what he looks like because he's busy fixing your bullshit electrical problems. Maybe you shut up. You hear me, electric. We don't get it right the first time. We'll get it right the second time. We don't get it rec- right the second time. You can go fuck yourself. Woo. Hey, and uh, if you do want to actually do some Amazon shopping, just go to lifeinthedutchhall.com, click on our Amazon banner, and do your shopping, and then we get the money, and mm. you get the pleasure of listening to our, gr- our show that gets better. Mm. Everybody's happy. Everyone's happy. There's no downside to it, so just do it. It's plus, plus. Yep. Man, we wish those commercials. We're nailing this show. Mm-hmm. All we got to get to is our listeners. You know, a lot of times, a lot of the feedback we got last week <laughs> was very technical. Hmm. Is, some people wanted to hear my voice more. They said, Kevin, turn up Peter's voice up more. Other people said, Charters is un- you can't hear him at all, right? Can't hear him at all. Well, it's, it's not a good there. show, then. 
Yeah, <laughs> they were very happy. About Don't that. change a thing. Very happy. They were saying this is the best show we've ever heard from a quality standpoint, and you should keep it up. But uh, as far as content goes, with all the provocative information we had from the conspiracy right. show, nothing at all. No bites, eh? No. You want to know why? We blew their fucking minds. <laughs> oh, they're fucked already. Yeah, we blew their minds. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do it. But you know, one person, one person that uh, won't, uh, that won't stop giving us feedback <laughs> is our good friend, the Cheese Lady. Oh. And I won't hear anything from it. So we got to listen to her, what she has to say. Because we're checking on the Cheese Lady. Well, I'll tell you, I think there might be some sort of a budding romance here between the cheese lady and the cheese man, Dave Charters. Whoa! Whoa. I don't know. I don't like it. His name's married to my cousin, but this is what she's... she's Medium she's, boner. You know what else I'm married to? Cheese. <laughs> yeah, he loves cheese. He's, uh, he's the ma- the member of the nocturnal mission that loves cheese the most. <laughs> Everyone knows that's Dave. That makes sense. So, uh, Teresa from the second most in Delhi, she gave Hi, us Teresa. this piece of feedback. She says, hashtag... Listening in Delhi, she goes, now I'm feeling guilty since Charters rated me the best listener of the week. Wow. Cheese plus Charters equals happy hashtag cheese lady. Whoa. Yes. And then she came back and she said, Charters, I have an, an amazing Scotland cheddar that you would love. Mm. Gr- hashtag grandma would be proud. Yeah, love yeah. how you guys edge each other on resulting in my Friday entertainment. LOL. Teresa. We love you, baby. <laughs> what you got to do is get Charles a bit of that cheese. Uh, Scott Scott and then, and then right what you got to do alley. is name your price. Charles will pay it because he's a rube. He loves <laughs> cheese so much. You can <laughs> you can rook this fucking fish in from a mile away. I'll buy a whole wheel. He's a pigeon. <laughs> he's right on the hook for you. Take advantage of this cocksucker because he's going to end up buying all your cheese for way too much money because he <laughs> is a fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I love cheese. <laughs> I love cheese. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. Even that one was tough the way I delivered it. <laughs> it even hurt me a little bit that I would do that to my friend. Anyways, uh, is that it? That's our feedback. We got feedback. Oh. So we're at the 52-minute show uh, point of the show. Holy shit. Yeah, we really whizzed through this one in a hurry. Blue. What do we learn? Uh, everywhere in the world is the same. Just do your own shit. Right, just do your own shit because no matter where you are, the people in LA were saying like, "I wish I was in New York. I wish I was somewhere else." You know, you just wish you didn't suck. Right, mm. that's what you wish. So just work on not sucking and do it wherever you are, and people will be fine with it. I don't care if you're in music, uh, in uh, any of the arts. Uh, you don't have to be in a big fucking city to prove you're great. We are in the internet age, right? You know what you do need to do though is come out to uh, Norfolk County to Pine Grove and come to the Dutch Hall if you want to prove you're great. Yeah, come, come right here on, on our show. show. We'll showcase you yeah, because yeah. we don't care about any of that. Let's see how great you are. Come on in. I got to tell you, I always expect to see a lot of like plastic faces in LA, you know, like fake. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fake people. I saw some. <laughs> but uh, I see. I saw some on the plane on the way home. Fake boobs? Lots of fake boobs? No, but the mannequins had huge fake tits. And I think that's because they had to sell <laughs> bikinis mannequins. to people with fake oh, tits, yeah. right? For sure. Yeah, that's what I think it was. See any thongs on the Venice Beach? We saw one. It was a. It was definitely an Hispanic woman, <laughs> with a really dark crevice. <laughs> and I it was. Uh, it make you me, wonder what's going on in there. Me and uh, me and my wife were like lying on these like uh, you know those things they have they're like uh, air hammocks. You know you blow them in the wind. Oh, Willie Naylor's selling them. Yeah, and then you roll them up, and then you make like a vagina that you lay that you lay in on the beach. <laughs> You know, yeah, just right yeah. in the folds of the blue vagina. Yeah, so we did that on uh, Venice Beach. We were lying in our vaginas, and then all of a sudden, uh, next to us, there's this dude playing a guitar, and his uh, girlfriend is like going in the ocean. It's fucking cold this day. It's cold. Like we're like we're on our vaginas bundled up on the beach. <laughs> this girl goes out in her shorts and stuff, and she's like in the ocean water, which is freezing. Because I went in it too. I went in it too. It was freezing. Of course you did. And it was, uh, and she was like taking and like soaking her hair. I can't see her face. I can see her, like her, her the her back, and she's like soaking her hair and stuff like that. 
And then all of a sudden, she, she goes back up to the towel to her guitar playing boyfriend. She takes off her shorts and she lies there with her dark crevice pointed at us. <laughs> and I just nudge my wife, like, look at that. And then she's like, uh, oh, yeah, like, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah. pretty dark. Oh, is that yeah. what you said? Hey, when, uh, when do the unfuckables go to their shaking knees festival? Oh yes, that's the last that way we end the show. The unfuckables. <laughs> Is that what you're calling Chargers tonight? <laughs> the unfuckables. Uh, well, I hope you're right, Paul. <laughs> I hope you're right for you for our Chargers' sake that you're right. Because Chargers, we're going on a double date. It's like Atlanta, the- Georgia, bright in the morning. Like there's hours before we leave. Yeah. Before true, our true story. F- for our flight. To Atlanta, Georgia. I it's shaking. 5 a.m. We should be on the road. So, fellas, what do we got to do? You got to give Charters and I a challenge. What we got to accomplish when we're at Shaking Knees? What do we got to accomplish? Oh yeah, what did I say? I had one uh, earlier. It was uh, shit. What is it, Michael? I don't know. It was. It, I had it. I can't remember. We need some jobs. Well, give us one easy one. Yeah, like, it was an easy don't one. Don't fuck anyone. Yeah. Well, there's no way either of you can get any pussy. What? <laughs> There's no way either of you oh, can get any pussy. I remember mine. <laughs> Just because I have it in my life so far doesn't mean I can't do it, Paul. <laughs> I can probably do it. Get I'm pretty attractive, actually. <laughs> Com- like, like I've, I've I'm I'm sick huge, or something. I'm I've lost huge a lot of weight. Cock block, though, so you have to overcome. You're that. a horrible wingman. <laughs> this is the real thing about Charles and I when we travel. When Charles and I travel, Jane said, like, uh, so she was asking me questions about Dave, and I'm like, I don't fucking care about Dave. Dave drunk <laughs> like, is I the don't, worst. I do not give one shit about Dave when I'm on this trip. I am doing whatever the fuck I want, and Charters is doing whatever the fuck he wants, and we may or may not see each other yeah. the entire weekend, right? Could happen. We'll meet at the hotel, yeah. right? Maybe. But both Charters and I like to wander, and we're going to wander. <laughs> is this not accepted? We'll just do whatever happens. <laughs> Like I don't care. I don't know. I've been on a number of trips with you, and we have. I've always just abandoned you at one point in time, and then found you again. I would say our paths will cross. You know, many mul- times, multiple times over yeah. the course of the weekend. Oh, I'll stay in contact with you. <laughs> I will stay in contact with you. I promise that I will not. And eventually, we'll end up sleeping in the same room. Yeah, that is. Those things yep. will happen. Two queens. But the rest of the day, I do not know if I will ever see you. And that will make for a great trip. That's going to be awesome. Yes. But what you've done is you've introduced two other people. Now we have to, like, worry about their concerns. Well-known people. I know, but I'm a free spirit. I'd wander. I don't like to call it a date. It's not a date. It's like when you travel anywhere in the world. Yes, but are we not going to be gentlemen to these ladies? Well, of course. We're always gentlemen. Are we not going to escort them on our arms? If, I guess. (laughs) What? If we need to. Charters wasn't all in on that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem like the sites that need escorts. didn't talk that one over. He didn't want to escort them on his arms at all. He no, really I'd, bought I that. would, but I don't think they need escorts. They're not the type to need escorts. If we're in a, uh, just an uncomfortable situation, you don't want to just put your arm out uh, to make them feel more comfortable? 100%. Their comfort is important. Would you throw your jacket down over a mud puddle? No. <laughs> they're on. They're, they're on their they're own. On their own yeah. That's the line. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That is the line. I will not go so far as to ruin my jacket. Yeah. But will you lose your like shoes, sunglasses, and hat? Probably, but it'll have nothing to do with them. Okay. Now <laughs> is the time of the sh- what? Yeah, but it'll have nothing to be because of the show, right? Well, who knows? Yeah. Because you bought Probably. a new you bought a new hat, brand new hat, and you got a new ex- haircut, spendable hat. Huh? He's willing to part. You know with that, that thing's not coming back with you. You're going there with it. There's and a good chance, it's, and there's a good chance it's not coming home. Yeah, yeah, that's true, right? Yeah. Other thing, I want to talk about a few things here. I'm also expecting to b- have to buy some shoes or steal some shoes yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah. We got our wallets. <laughs> as long as we got our wallets and our passports, yeah, yeah, we can good. get there and back that's fine. Right. We'll be cool. Now, you charters, you got a new haircut for this, eh? Yeah, fresh haircut. Yeah. You want to show the people at home? Just take your hat off. Just give them a little look at that thing. Oh, that's nice. Fresh cut. Crop right down. I'm going to be looking like I'm I'm uh, walking around with my uh, hipster daddy. Look right? like a guy from Eagles of Death Metal. Yeah. Kind yeah. of. Hmm. You're right in there, Charters. Now, you have other things to make you look cool when you're down there other than your haircut? Uh, look cool? Yeah. Did you like, bring like a cool... I don't cool have any tattoos or... Uh, so you got to do it with... Tattoos uh, are cool. I don't have any piercings. So you got to do it with what? Your T-shirt? Your Star Wars T-shirt? Is that your first plan? <laughs> Are you wearing that the whole time we're down there? We'll see. What are you I'm packing? I'm I'll probably wear on this on the plane tomorrow and then uh, figure something out when we get there. 
Do you have a bag? I have a small bag. Are you checking it or are you putting it on the <laughs> oh, u- no. upper? It just goes under my seat. You want to know what I did? Spirit in my Air, eh? They don't. I know. I'm, I'm checking air. mine because it's cheaper. It's five bucks cheaper to check it. What? You're checking a bag? Yeah. I'm not waiting for you to check your bag. You're going to have to get your own Uber. I don't give a go. shit, man. I got Lyft. You're I ain't even <laughs> using a uh, fucking Uber. You're going to wait on that carousel for your bag? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do because uh, it was five bucks cheaper and I got to so go through customs anyways. I don't give a fuck. I'll meet you at the show. All right. I'm going to have a great time. Enjoy the opening acts. <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck at all. But I'm going to have $5. <laughs> It'll buy you a third of a drink at the concert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah, but it'll be my third of a drink that's fucking free. I'm going to put it right in your eyeballs because I didn't have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah that's going to be great, Dave. Oh, I'm going to torture you. And we are going to have such a great time. Uh, well, if by a great time you mean like I am going to like try to make you to do things that you'll regret and then laugh about him and tell Michael when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm really hoping. Dude. I remembered what I wanted you guys to try to do. What is, what it? is it? Make a girl do a cartwheel. Just oh. a cartwheel? That's it. It's a reasonable. Uh, I'll get it on video. Yeah. There you go. Slow mo video. I think you guys need to have some fanny packs oh. as well. Ooh, I, have, wow. I think wow. fanny Keep packs need to be it. part of this travel. It's safe. A fanny pack. And you you have maybe even a cartwheel. You have to get the cartwheel while wearing the fanny pack. Oh. I Look, me. I cartwheel with me and Turner's no, no, cartwheel. Girls with, no, cartwheel. No, no, no. Gir- the girls are doing the cartwheels. They will Who wear cares about you guys. Yeah, we don't care about you. Uh, the girls doing cartwheels. Girls doing cartwheels. You know what we have? We can use the Barbie Mansion girls to be our, like our uh, That's right. our, our roadies. Mm. That's you have girls oh, yeah. to help you get. That's girls. the best part. They got a lot of rules on what we can bring into the park. We can't bring any like Zoom recorder. We nothing. We gotta go no bags. Yeah, no bags. I got pockets. I got a whole bunch of pocket mm. plans. No bags has their own line. Yeah, no bags, man. No bags, and I'm just putting stuff up my ass. That's what I was planning on from the beginning. You know what else you can do at this festival? balloon now. (laughs) You get your bracelet. You can just uh, attach your credit card to your bracelet. You don't need to bring any cash or anything. Just put everything on your bracelet. Yeah, no, I did that way home last year. It was the best. Yeah, that's smart. Except for the bill at the end. Yeah, well, yeah. (laughs) I was rich as fuck. You had to just, like, uh, no, you had to upgrade it, though, every once in a while. So you just keep tapping until you're, like, out, and then you have to go to another booth where you, like, uh, up oh, okay, here. you load it up with you cash load it up, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, but uh, but if you do it on your credit card, you don't have to do that, so it's even better. Mm. Anyways, that's not neither here nor there. They neither here. What I wanted to talk about charters was the fact that uh, uh, Michael has a beard and no mustache, <laughs> and I don't understand since the beginning of this night how Michael came in with a beard and no mustache, <laughs> and he has one of the hottest fiancés I've ever seen in my whole life <laughs> and he looks like a goddamn Mennonite. You know what that is? <laughs> he's like a raisin a barn over here. I believe. And I don't understand how this happened the whole time. He's handsome beard, no mustache. What's going on? Possible. Ezekiel. I believe that you can you can date you can a- date Michael's age based on his facial hair just like a, you know if you see a girl with a California license plate, a lower back tattoo you yeah. know she's like mid 90s maybe 2000s. How about, maybe, uh, maybe. How about a, a barbed wire on the arm? Late 90s. Oh, that's like yeah. Baywatch. That's Pam yeah. Anderson. Late 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Rose Michael tattoos. No left, sho- left shoulder. Rose tattoo. Late 80s. Oh, yeah. You want to go uh, dolphin on the ankle? Yeah. Fucking uh, the ankle? 90s. 90s. Early, early 90s. 90s. Yeah. Early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Hey, butterfly on uh, uh, the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that's mid, universal, mid. baby. Yeah. That works all the time. Timeless. That's just a whore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Ageless. You are. <laughs> I love how we're judging all these people. <laughs> I didn't know um, my facial <laughs> hair was judged either. Judge <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, what are you saying there, Isaac? Yeah, I, don't, I didn't know it was a judge. You know what I like to do? <laughs> I like to shave the duster off because it grows back tomorrow. <laughs> really? And then it equals the rest of my beard. Your duster grows as faster than your chin hair does? Like three times faster. Are you forgetting that he won the mustache contest? Yeah. I know he's a beast, but yeah. the, I thought the whole thing grew at the same No, like pace. tomorrow morning you'd never question it. It's just because I had a nice fresh shower. <laughs> and you decided to just shave the mustache, but to keep this because it's going to be like yeah, there tomorrow. tomorrow it'll all be equal. <laughs> Perfect. It'll be equal. Yeah. You all just right. seen it fresh. I thought you were raising a barn in the morning. I'll tell you. It's my mistake. Uh, yeah, I am working on the farm, <laughs> but I'll tell you who doesn't mind it. I tell you, it doesn't mind it cleaned up around oh. the old. Uh, the old. Uh, I bet you could guess. Oh, probably sweet, sweet Kelly. Oh, good guess. She's a kisser. Wow. You know what? I didn't get a kiss from her, but I did get a nice, sweet hug last time I went <laughs> to visit you. And I tell you, I miss Kelly. I missed her. I liked it. 
I like the hug. I like the whole thing. <laughs> and you're rattled how the hell I'm with her, right? Yeah, I just started uh, <laughs> questioning everything. Like I was like, how did Mike do this? <laughs> she smells like nice Pert Plus or something. Like is uh, well, it's better than Pert Plus? Oh, what is that? Like uh, yourself? <laughs> is that like a uh, what is that one with like a uh, oh, nat- oh natural or herbal. maybe herbal, herbal essence? essence? Oh, oh yeah. maybe even a dove. Was yeah, it an herbal, herbal essence? Mm. Oh. That's what I was thinking. Herbal essence, whoever. Were you just moaning when you smell it? Oh. Really? That's what we have to do, people. Well, well, you come to the. For everyone out there that was wondering this whole show while you were looking at Michael's bald upper lip <laughs> and wondering if he had, like, joined the Mennonite church. I have. No, he hasn't. <laughs> He's a good Catholic boy that just wants to give his nice, his nice fiance a smooch once in a while. That's right. Yeah, with a little <laughs> bit not of. Not get pricked by it. Just yeah, a nice. Not get pricked. You don't nice want to get poked. Cast. That's right. It was a nice smooth kiss. Today was a nice change. like new guy almost. But I like it, Michael. Yeah. Change it up. Keep it fresh. <laughs> Charters, I swear to God, to me. we're going to have the best time in our lives. A few hours away, buddy. We're on the road. Yeah, yeah. me and you are on the I road. Know. It's going to be great. Next time, we'll be able to talk about all of our hijinks in Atlanta. Mm. And I'll tell you, we'll do everything we can to bring you back something, something, anything. At least a good. cartwheel. That's all I ask. <laughs> anything we can do, but a cartwheel is guaranteed. We're gonna do a cartwheel. A, a female doing a cartwheel that isn't the Bourbon Mansion girls. Yeah, actually, I, I would like to see because there's two of you. Two. Two oh, females. One for each guy. <laughs> okay, and you can ra- let's rank them. Okay, no, no. Oh yes, yeah. please rank okay. them. Okay. Pete's cartwheel and Michael. What about Ryan? a hand like a round off? That counts oh, too. Uh, yeah, sure. So Any sort of gymnastics move. How about that's that? right. Cool. Charters. So, this is very good. I want. This is great that we're ending with this. This is what we're doing. If you get a better cartwheel than me, and I've already gotten my cartwheel, I can then get another one to sure, yeah, beat the whole yours. weekend. The whole weekend to put to, to trump your each best. other. Absolutely. So if I decide to go topless cartwheel, that's pretty good. That's better than go like, bottomless. Nobody said you can. Oh, well, that's oh. available. Oh, if it, if, whatever. I will bottomless with a banana in your asshole. <laughs> I do that one. <laughs> that's how it goes. That sounds like a challenge is on. We go to the next one. <laughs> Right? Charles keeps raising the bar. You can do it. Charles, we're going to have the greatest weekend ever. (laughs) Hey, Barry Mansion Girls, if you're listening, we're going to get some bananas. (laughs) We're going to have a great time. All right? (laughs) We don't have to tell our wives everything. Let's have a good weekend. For everyone that's listening, this is live from the Dutch Hall. You just had a great time. Sure did. Yeah. That's what it's all about every Thursday here in Pine Grove. We had a blast. Let's keep doing it. Uh, if you want to tell your friends, uh, do that because uh, we need it. And if you want to provide us with some feedback, live from the Dutch Hall, gmail.com, live from the Dutch Hall on Facebook, Dutch Hall on Instagram, Dutch Hall on Twitter, Dutch Hall on LinkedIn. Fuck you guys. I don't need anything <laughs> else. I think I'm actually on Snapchat as Dutch Hall too. So just do it. Get a hold of us. Tell us what you think. Uh, until next week, let's see you in T. See you next Thursday. Hit it. <laughs>